The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the QATV staff or board of directors. QATV, in compliance with FCC regulations, is prohibited from exercising control over the content of independent, member-produced public access programming. All right, so welcome. This is uh, the City of Quincy Street hearing for July 13th, 2021. Um, this is the Department of Natural Resources, and I just want to, uh, somebody a long time ago told me, uh, you know, you should really tell kind of people what you are, who you are, what you're doing here, just not some just random guy came off the street and wanted to talk about trees, but yeah, so I've got a little history here. So uh, my name is Chris Hayward, and I'm the tree warden <coughs> for the City of Quincy. Uh, Brett Bridgewater State grad, so local guy. Uh, I started off my career as a wetland scientist and a CAD operator for an engineering company in Cambridge and really liked that job until they wanted to start sending me around the world to really places I didn't want to be, so uh, I wanted to stay a little more local. Uh, I completed a New England Soil Science Certificate program through UMass, and then I became uh, the town of Watertown's conservation agent, historic preservation tree warden. And I worked there for uh, about 12 years. Uh, Watertown required me to become a Massachusetts Certified Arborist through the Mass Arborist Association. I, I was able to secure that in uh, 2007. Uh, Watertown was coming up uh, through uh, the stormwater process and trying to clean up our stormwater. Where I was a conservation agent, I was appointed to that committee in 2009. Uh, I've been a member of the Massachusetts Tree Warrens and Forests Association since 2007 and somebody on that board kind of liked me and they nominated me as president or i think i was the day that i stood there and everyone else took the step back <laughs> because it was a lot of work so uh i was the president of that association for uh, uh two years at our 100th anniversary uh, and then somebody really liked me and nominated me as 2017 tree warden of the year and my colleagues gave me that award which still to this day really gets me um, I did uh, decide I wanted to kind of go off into the conservation direction. Uh, that's kind of where I started, and I had an opportunity to work at the uh, I did that for a year, and I came back to Watertown because I really missed being part of the tree business. Uh, conservation is a lot of uh, shirt and tie meetings, developers, lawyers, regulations like this, and all these pi files and reports, and I was never getting outside. So I really wanted to get back into the tree position. So uh, not only did uh, Watertown take me back as the tree warden, but they made me the supervisor of their forestry department uh, at that time. Um, during that time, the town of Braintree, where I live, appointed me to their conservation commission, which I'm still serving on. Um, and then if anybody uh, lives in this area and wants to go to Watertown, you recognize how bad that commute is. So when the Quincy job came up, even though Watertown was so nice to bring me back, and it still pains me to say that I did this to those guys, uh, I became the Quincy Tree Warden in no November of 2019, and I'm really glad I did it. I, I like working there an awful lot. Okay. So I just to have you. With thank, that experience. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. What's CAD? What's that? CAD. What is that? Oh, CAD, Computer Aided Design. Okay. <clears throat> so one of the things, to, just to get into that uh, that company. Uh, I had like a little bit of a GIS background, geographic information systems, and computer aided design. CDM is a big company uh, designing uh, sewer treatment plants, water treatment plants. They work for a bunch of communities. They're worldwide. So I got in just because I had that little computer knowledge, and I was ta taught how to design like pipe systems. And it wasn't really where I wanted to be, though. I didn't want to be sitting behind a computer all day long. So I kept talking myself up, talking myself up, and I eventually. Was sent, I was working in the Providence office at the time, and I was sent to uh, Cambridge to uh, get out there with the bugs and bunnies where I really wanted to be. So, We have seven trees in 97 East Harwood Street, and the reason for this hearing is uh, new development will include expanded tree pits for more durable trees. Many of these pear trees are damaged due to growth habit. We're going to go through that. Uh, then we have a couple trees over on Ames Street. Ames Street is currently uh, under the DPW's uh, road reconstruction program, which uh, I'm still getting to know that program, but they pick and choose so many streets per year. And so uh, three trees on this street that I found to be uh, not something that I wanted to remove without talking to the public about first. So uh, we have three trees, a nori, two nori maples and an ash tree. And then we have um, uh, over on 48 Miles Drive, which is, if anybody's familiar, it's off of Furnace Brook across from the Bernazani School, it's Miles Drive. Um, 
a red oak. And the abutting resident is, has been very concerned with the roots in her sewer pipe and she's concerned about cracks in her driveway, property, uh, she has a property line foundation wall, and she's requesting immediate removal of this healthy oak. So now, while I've got um, some people in the room here, I kind of like to spread just a little information. So hopefully uh, you guys uh, all are happy with learning a little bit of something about what's going on in our environment. So one of the uh, major pests in our area right now is the emerald ash borer. Um, it was identified somewhat here in Quincy uh, in uh, January of this uh, past year. Um, it's just, just a little bugger, literally. It, um, it's only about the size of a penny. Uh, it's a fast moving bug. It does all kinds of damage to ash trees. This is, it's a beautiful looking little bug. If you see it, you'd recognize it and you'd remember it for sure. Um, this pest is known for wiping out about 56 million ash trees throughout the United States right now. Anybody is a major league baseball fan, they used to use uh, ash bats. Well, they've had to move off the maple bats because the ash, because of the damage that these things do, the bats were shattering even more uh, than the maple bats do now. So, but this is the damage that this little critter does. And it's not from the beetle itself, it's from the larva, which is just a little worm. So when the, uh, the actual beetle lays its eggs on the tree, these little larvae go down and they just eat right in the cambium layer. So that's a little high talking botany stuff, but it's basically the way the tree feeds itself. The xylem and the phloem. The xylem moves up and the phloem flows down. So that's where nutrients come from the dirt and water goes up through the tree. And that little bug is in there basically, it's like if you, with a human being, it's like that little bug is going and sewing up your lips and you can't eat anymore because you just, it's basically taking away the tree's ability to feed itself. And it's a fast moving bug. It's gonna be in every community in Massachusetts. I have a map here that's showing that this is where it was in just March of 2020. These are the communities that they know they had it. Here's Quincy right here, so still not on the map. And then just uh, a year later, you can see how that's filled in. Quincy is now on the map. Uh, it's, in, it's, it's in our area, there's no question about it. And it's gonna just go right through the state. There are some communities that have large ash populations. There are some communities that don't. We have a from my year and a half being here, we do have a fairly good amount of ash trees uh, growing along the streets and people's yards and such. So, unfortunately, this is going to be something that you're going to be seeing. Have they always been here? Or? No, no, no. They're invasive pests. They're from Rhode Island? Or? No, they're yeah. from uh, <laughs> they're from uh, Asia. And they came over in packing crates. Is there treatment for this? So we have. Um, UMass, as long, along with uh, other government agencies, have released parasitic wasps mm -hmm. uh, that have been known just to go after this type of bug. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to be releasing biological controls because that can create a big problem for other things. But so these th there's three little wasps, and I won't even give you the names. You're, I'm not going to pronounce them right anyway. Uh, but these little wasps go around. They lay eggs, and those it's they're parasitic. So when the eggs hatch, they eat the beetle itself. So. Um, there are treatments that you can inject trees, but they're very expensive, so most municipalities can't get into it. You know, we do it if it was like a heritage tree in a park that this ash tree has been there forever, it's a beauty, it's, you know, we, we try the best we could then, but street trees, it's just not something we're going to be able to do. So we're hoping that those little wasps, you know, get going, but this is a very fast moving bug. Um, when did they release? The wasps, over time, they've been going over time since probably about, uh, so the first identification of this pest in mass was in 2012. So it's probably in the last five years they've started releasing that wasp. So three different little wasps. And they're tiny little things too, they're not anything you'd be worried about getting stung or anything. So, so uh, yeah, that's, um, so that's, that's the deal in emerald ash borer. So you'll be seeing it if you see ash trees and you you know ash trees and you have problems with it, you can give me a call and I can come out and take a look at it for you. But yeah, unfortunately it's on its way. This is the Asian longhorn beetle. This is a much bigger bug. And I actually have a, I, I didn't bring in my actual beetle. I have one under plastic. They're a good sized beetle. They're, they're pretty <coughs> nasty beetle. Um, and thankfully these, these pests have only been identified in the Worcester area. Shrewsbury, Worcester, Boylston, West Boylston. This is, I believe this is a 102 square mile quarantine area. Um, th this bug was brought over here too um, on, in packing crates 
it was identified by a resident. A resident was sitting in her backyard and she saw this beetle fly by and it just kind of landed on her table and she, wow, I never saw that before. And she went and identified it. And when she did, there was a big warning about it. It had been in New York, it had been in New Jersey. Uh, so she called the number on this warning website and they came and all of a sudden we have a 102 square mile zone. They've taken down, oh Jesus, it's about 30,000 trees already, but they have a, a tree rep uh, replacement program and they've been planting trees right along uh, to try to combat this. Unfortunately, this pest goes after many more trees than just one single species. Uh, it goes, Norway maple is one of its biggest uh, um, likes and unfortunately Norway maple is a tree that is dominant in our area. It was planted very heavily, especially after the hurricane of uh, 38. It's an easy tree to get a hold of. It was anyway. It's now considered an invasive species. We don't plant nori maples anymore. Uh, and it does very well in poor soils. So you can just plant it and go and it will take off. Uh, if you have yards and you like to keep your yards clean, uh, in the springtime, uh, you see all these little tiny maple trees growing up, especially when you're chain link fences. Those are the Norway maples. They're the ones with the little uh, kids call them the noses. Those are called Samaras. And yeah, so um, so that's an invasive species, and um, that pest goes after it wholeheartedly. They love that thing. And, but they also love um, lindens. They love elms. They love a bunch of different species. So hopefully uh, we've got this contained to an area. They haven't found any new, um, the, the quarantine area is still alive, but they haven't found any kind of signs of it outside of Massachusetts, um, outside of this area in Massachusetts. There were six trees um, at the Faulkner Hospital right across from the Arnold Arboretum back in, I think it was 2000, and, I want to say it was 2012. It was a uh, caretaker for the hospital, saw some of the holes on this tree, and they were able to get these trees out of there. The trees had just been planted, and they were brought in from an area in Shrewsbury, from a oh. nursery in Shrewsbury. So this caretaker just really knew what he was looking for, and they, they immediately got rid of the trees. They did a full survey of all the arboretum, and they didn't find any uh, evidence. So, And this has been a few years now, we haven't had any signs of it, so hopefully we were able to keep that under control and keep it contained. And I like to, I like to throw up this picture because <laughs> They are really awesome looking bugs and, uh, you know, it's, they're great, but they're just, it's public enemy number one for a uh, tree warden. This pest is not in Massachusetts yet. This is a spotted lanternfly, uh, but it's a nasty little critter. It goes mostly after, it's interesting, where the Asian longhorn beetle went after an invasive species in the Norway maple, this preferred uh, tree by this species is the tree of heaven, which if you're not sure of, is considered a trash tree. It's, it grows in, along the edges of the roads and like drainage ditches and dumps and just, it's not the nicest tree in the world. It falls apart rather easy. It gets pretty big, but it's not something you want to put in your, your front yard or hold on to. And this bug goes after it. We have a lot of them, unfortunately. It also goes after, the problem is it, it goes after apple trees, a lot of our orchard type trees so that if it got into this area, we could be losing a lot of uh, business uh, for uh, orchard and, uh, growers. Uh, it also goes after grapes, and it even goes after uh, pines. And when this pest gets into town, I wish I had put a little video on this. I probably should have done that, but it, it amasses in like groups of thousands. It's like gypsy moth caterpillars. So it's just thousands of, and they're, they're good size. Uh, let's see, I don't have them. Uh, yeah, about, they're about an inch long and an inch, half inch wide. So they're about this big. It's just thousands on the side of a tree. It looks like the tree is actually moving and crawling. Disgusting. They are really nice looking pests. Again, you know, these bugs, some of them are great looking, but we definitely don't want this uh, in, in town. Uh, it was found in Massachusetts. Uh, but it was, it was a dead insect inside of a poinsettia plant that was transferred in from Connecticut. So it was identified, it was discovered as being dead, that, uh, that nursery, whoever was selling those plants, figured out what it was, figured out where they got their plants from. It had been identified down in that area of Connecticut, so they stopped doing that kind of business with that nursery. So, but the, the, it's really in Pennsylvania right now, and. Uh, those folks in Pennsylvania are having a big problem with it, so we're trying to like, I, you know, educate as many people as we possibly can to let them know. So if you see anything like that, again, you know, call your local tree warden, go on to the website, uh, any, go on to Google, just Google spotted lanternfly in New England, and you'll see numbers that'll come up, and you can call these people, and they'll come up and uh, identify and hopefully help treat. 
Um, now this has got nothing to do with pests, but this has got everything to do with the health of trees. Uh, a lot of people, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term mulch volcano. It's just a term that we use when it looks like a volcano. It's, this is a cultural thing I've found mostly. People just, some people like the look of that. It just looks beautiful on the tree. But you're putting so much money into the tree. Why would you want to do that? Because you're going to end up killing the tree. What this does is it traps moisture within that uh, mulch bed. You get all kinds of pests. You get all kinds of wood boring beetles. You get fungus. You get molds. That'll end up killing your tree. So you don't want to make this mounding. You want to put it like this. Mulch is so beneficial to a tree, especially in its first three years after being planted in a, in a location. It insulates the soil. It allows the roots to spread a little bit more. Uh, it protects from heat. It also protects from cold. Um, there's many different uses for mulch, but not that. So I see it all the time. I go and you know we'll plant street trees, and people will come out. You know, ah, geez, we mulch the trees, and they'll come out and they'll rake it all apart. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I try to give information to people all the time about, you know, you put all this money into this, don't, don't do that. You're just wasting your money. So, so this is uh, this is the best way to go about it. So that's my quick little informational uh, situation here. Let's why don't we just move it in the tree hearing so everyone can get going on their day. So I want to give an oversight here of 97 East Howard Street, uh, where there is seven trees. Uh, and I don't know if, if everyone had had a chance to go out, and, you know, if you saw my agenda beforehand, you were able to go out, take a drive around, look at all these trees. Uh, I can't assume that everyone does that, so I kind of want to give an idea of what's going on here. Uh, East Howard Street down there at the south end of uh, Quincy, uh, you know, kind of an area that's getting built up and all. Um, there are seven, eight trees here. I, I call this one eight and we'll see a picture of it. It's, it's, it's dead, so it didn't really need to be on a tree here, but I wanted to make sure that I'm transparent what, what we're talking about here. Uh, these seven trees were planted here, I don't know, probably, some of them probably within the last <coughs> 20 years or so, I would say. One of them even probably within the last like three or four years, and you'll understand why I'm still calling out for that tree to be removed. But this is basically what we're talking about when we're talking about these trees. I don't do this for every tree, um, set of trees, but because there's so many at one address, I wanted people to see what was going on here. So for the reason for these hearings, everything is gonna be the same for the next seven trees, but I gotta throw this on and we'll talk about each tree individually. But so this is the first tree. And again, when you look back at the number, so we're starting, uh, this would be to the east and this would be to the west. So we're starting up here, there's a little uh, driveway coming in. So. For anybody that's been out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, so these are uh, pear trees. Every one of these trees we're talking about here is a pear tree. Um, the pear trees that are planted around here, they were planted because, and, and many communities plant them. They're very easy to grow. They, they, they take very easily, much like a Norway maple. The problem is, a lot of these trees have been crossbred with other types of pears to get different features, whether it's fall color, whether it's branching habit, whether it's flowers, with many different things. So you can take one certain type of pear and crossbreed it with another by you know, using pollen or grafting it onto the roots of another tree. You can do different things to get a certain feature. The unfortunate thing is when you do that with certain, you get other features that aren't really wanted. And you get a feature called included bark. And this is notorious on calorie pears, Bradford pears. And included bark is a situation where this right here would be considered a crotch. So a healthy crotch for a tree is more of a U shape. That's two strong branches. When you get them together like this, that's an area that collects decay. Uh, again, little critters get in there. It's a nice warm little place and set up shop, lay eggs, start a family and start wailing away on this tree. Start eating it. And, and this is a perfect example right here. All these new shoots right here are coming out of this branch that cracked off. And I have many pictures of all these trees. This is a different tree down the line, but it's a better look of what I'm talking about. So this is a tree, a branch that broke off. And the thing is, these branches just break off randomly. You could just be walking down the street and just the weight of it, the amount of decay, they'll eventually just snap off and just break. I used to get calls in Watertown all the time. We had this one place. It was right behind a little row of shops. And when they planted it some years ago, it was beautiful. The, the pears are just beautiful. And I became the tree warden for this, this community when these trees decided they all wanted to fail. So it was over a period of 12 years where there were 13 trees and every single one of them failed 
year after year after year, randomly. Windshield smash, shop of carriages smash. Thank goodness nobody ever got hurt. So I just said, that's it, I'm having a tree hearing, and just bang, took them all out. So I just, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. But you can see already with this one right here, this branch falling away has revealed that this crotch right here, even though there's a little bit of a gap, there's a crack already forming. This tree wants to just split in half. Uh, the, the leaves on these trees are leathery. They're very heavy. They get, uh, you know, heavy with flowers. They get heavy with fruit, and they're just they're just brittle. They just fall apart. They are called the Bartlett pear too. Uh, no, no, not a Bartlett pear. Okay. No, nope. this is a calorie pear. So a Bartlett pear is more of an orchard pear. Okay. Yeah. So this is a different thing. But the pears on this, they're little tiny ornamental yeah. things. <clears throat> So again, included bark or ingrown bark uh, tissues often develop where two or more stems grow closer together, causing weak, under-supported branch angles. Bark often grows around the branching stem attachment and into the union between the two stems. Heavy science for basically this is bad news. We don't like to see this at all. It doesn't just happen to pear trees. It happens to red maples. It happens to silver maples. There's many different types of trees that this happens to. But it's notorious in the pears because it happens all the time. All the time. So that's um, tr tree number one. <clears throat> so um, I guess, and the way a tree hearing typically goes is, I, I call out, okay, we've talked about tree number one. Is there anybody in here in this uh, room right now? And I didn't receive any emails from anybody. Uh, it was in the newspaper. I have a copy of my newspaper article. Uh, there's a paragraph that says, if you can't be here today, you could email me before 11 o'clock. You could uh, issue your concerns about whether you want the tree to stay or you should like the tree to go. Let me know whatever you want. I didn't hear from anything, so you guys are in. <laughs> so I'm working with you folks today. So um, is there anybody here that's in favor of keeping this tree? All right, so I'm just going to say that we're going to move down the line, but this we'll, tree... We'll the ones that they get taken down, are they automatically replaced? Uh, not, some, in some cases they aren't, but in this case, I'm going to talk about that at the end, that that's the plan. That is the plan. And, and, and uh, actually, if you remember, the reason for the hearing is the uh, new development will include expanded tree pits for more durable trees. So that's, that's the ultimate plan there. So I'm going to just... And we hold them to it. What's that? And do we hold them to Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I work with the building department. I work with uh, DPW. That, um, and I found that the building department here is working with me an awful lot, especially we have a private tree ordinance. I could talk about that later after the meeting. Um, they're working with me an awful lot, and they're holding back certificate of occupancies from certain buildings. If they've agreed to do this, and you want to move in, well, then you haven't finished the project. Get your trees in there. So work with me. So, <clears throat> so we're going to uh, say that tree number one, we're going to let go. All right. So moving on, tree number two. Now, the other reason why I have a tree hearing um, is because just. I don't assume that everybody knows trees. So when you come driving down the road, you look at that and say, why would anybody want to get rid of a tree? That looks perfectly fine. I wouldn't mind having that in my front yard. Until you get a, a little bit closer and you start looking at the tree. It's already lost a branch and it's starting to put up new shoots here. So all the weight of this tree now is, is it's supported at a, a damaged crotch, basically. So you've got an area that's going to be all decay. There's nothing I'm going to be able to do to clean that up. I could probably go in there and do some trimming on it, but it's just always going to be a problem because there's other branching attachments up here that are just too close. So you look at a tree from afar, it looks great. You get up a little bit closer, there are problems. And that's the job of a tree warden. That's what I, that's what I do. I have to go around and try to find out what's going on. So I didn't even go too far on this particular tree. Is there anybody here in favor of keeping tree number two at 97 East Howard? No. All right. Moving on. We go off to tree number three. Again, same thing. From afar, it looks like a fine tree. I believe this is the tree that, yeah, I took the picture of. Uh, there's the crack. It, it looks like this from the opposite side. So if you came from another side, you say, well, that's perfectly fine. And then you see it on the other side. Anytime I see a crotch that looks like this, I want to get a closer look. I want to see what's going on. And, and I didn't need to look too far. I found what was going on. Anybody here in favor of holding on to tree number three? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, how old are these trees? So I'm going to guess that this particular tree right here, and y you got to consider its surroundings too. Um, it, there's hardly any 
pervious area, an area that allow water to get through, except for under this grate, which is completely just full of weeds and rubbish and whatever. But I'm gonna guess that these trees are probably in the area of like about maybe 15 to 20 years old, maybe 25 in some cases. There's a couple that are a little bit bigger. This one was a, this one was 13 inch, so it's one of the bigger trees, so. They don't plant them. I don't know, I don't know. I Maybe the town, maybe, maybe it was, was parking kept them like, I mean, it's obviously it's on the sidewalk. Uh, yeah, sidewalk. unfortunately, uh, when these trees were planted, I haven't found any records in the mm -hmm. city of when, what trees were planted and why they were planted, who planted them and so you know, like a, that's not a shipyard, right? Yeah. Right. So, Are oh, you the first tree warden? Yes. I have been told that I'm the first tree warden <laughs> in the history of Quincy, which is kind of blowing my mind. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. About yeah. Time. yeah. There was a, um, so the forestry department, the, the guys that work for me are right across the way here. And what I've been told is um, the person that was before me, um, he was the mayor's brother, and he was a, just a master at using machinery. Just a master. And he was kind of, it, it, this is the way it is in most communities. Uh, the mayor or the town manager or the board of selectmen say, okay, you know what, you're going to be our tree warden. Okay, I'm the tree warden. <laughs> so that's it. And there's an actual law that says we're supposed to be having tree hearings and we're supposed to be doing this and that. And that wasn't really the case. The tree hearing would be, hey, you know what, I'm thinking about taking down this tree. Whoever wants to come out and meet me next to the tree, let's talk about it. And if you're not going to show up, I'll just cut it down. And that's kind of the way it was. They weren't even announced. Yeah, they weren't announced um, when road projects were happening, if the tree was kicking out into the curb a little bit. Ah, cut it down. Nobody cares. So before I got hired and was doing my research in this job, and I live in Branchy, so I know some friends that here live in Quincy, and they're like, Boy, uh, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna be scratching your head at how many trees have come down. Nobody ever talks about it. So uh, yeah, it's 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 been interesting. Yeah. So um, who planted them? I don't know. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do we know if it's a, is it a residential development going in or uh, do we know what kind of? So Mr. Burke here, uh, Jim Burke is uh, the representative for this project. So maybe it's a good time for me to uh, just kind of introduce you. If you could just tell us a little bit about what you know. So um. I work with Mr. Burke. Uh, Mr. Burke owns the shipyard, uh, and he has uh, been for years uh, redeveloping uh, the shipyard piece by piece. And the uh, the admin, uh, which was, you know, the original admin building back when they were building ships for uh, uh, in, in the 30s, um, was built for strictly that. And uh, he uh, kind of. Re, he's re, uh, rehabbing the whole thing, uh, that building in itself. And uh, I don't know if you, I'm sure you're familiar with Mr. Quirk's properties kind of throughout Quincy and Braintree. They have a certain professional look to them. Um, so he looked at uh, uh, the sidewalk and uh, uh, from along that whole frontage area and uh, felt it needed some improvement uh, to make. Uh, you know, a, a betterment for the city as well as a betterment for himself, for his property. Uh, took a look at the trees, felt that, the, you know, uh, with the development across the street, felt that we, you know, could make a, uh, you know, a certain situation better. If you look at the sidewalk too, it's actually fairly tough to traverse it. There's a, a lot of the root systems are busting up the concrete and, and the like. So uh, we're looking to just uh, kind of remove and replace that existing sidewalk with the, uh, with exactly the same thing, so uh, that uh, that brick uh, 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 stripe there will be replaced uh, along with the, and he's looking to replace all those trees as well. So um, that's really kind of the whole impetus how, how it really started. And you'll consult with someone like Chris. Uh, you know, I was talking. I was, I'm going to jump onto the the Quincy Tree Alliance website <laughs> and uh, and see what I can find. Um, yeah. So you know, like I said, we. You, I was trying to uh, see what the species are across the street with that new development. Uh, you have an opportunity to kind of make a, a nice tree-lined street, so kind of we match it to the side. I'm not too sure if that's going to be the best solution, and we'll certainly talk to Chris about that. But uh, yeah, as far as the species goes, we haven't really gotten that far, uh, but uh, uh, we're definitely removing and replacing uh, uh, what we, you know, what we say. 
Um, I'm just wondering if the city is still going to be planting calorie pears and s like, is there kind of a rule against it since they tend to be breaking now? We still plant <clears throat> calorie yeah. pears in certain locations with the understanding that they're probably, we're not probably going to have them much longer than 15 years. Okay. Uh, prune them appropriately, try to do the best we can for them. Uh, in some cases in the city, we're talking about a little patch like that pervious. Uh, for pervious, that's all we have. So what are we going to do? Uh, I can't plant any kind of a big shade tree in that location. It's just not going to survive. These pear trees, again, like Nora Maple, do well in really poor conditions. Um, it's not something that I'm really happy about. I, I'd like to start seeing that when we you know, do roads over, sidewalks over, we're, we're putting in the right soils underneath, we're putting in uh, areas so that roots can spread so they don't kick up sidewalks. You know, there's, there's technology that's forming and been developed and, you know, over time. And it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's a new way of thinking. It's a little bit more money from this part of the project now shifted to this part of the project. So you got to kind of convince folks to do that. And so that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. So unfortunately, until then, pears are still uh, something that are... Not, not a lot, but a little bit. So I would just um, like to add to this, these points. Um, I think that this could potentially be a good opportunity at this development to do um, a, a, the sidewalk detailing a little bit different than maybe the typical um, city sidewalk gets installed where um, some of those kind of like structural soils or other ways of just installing the sidewalk and planting the trees could be implemented because it's will be more cost effective as well since you're doing that whole long strip. Um, so like looking into like what's best with those particular particular site constraints um, could be good and that would uh, ensure at least a little bit longer lifespan potentially for those trees that are selected. Um, and then to the point of planting cal calorie pears which do grow well in these urban environments, I think that it's it would be really great just in general to see more diversity of um, different species being planted because um, although they do really well, there's a lot of other um, trees that would be, it would be good to try even and see, you know, so even though you might not have the space for, for a big um, oak shade tree, oaks, um, you know, red oaks actually do do pretty well in urban environments and things like that. And there are these cultivars um, that grow skinnier and things like that, that I think it would be really worth the city um, just like kind of, you know, test running other species and, and seeing how they thrive in these uh, challenging spots. Fifteen years is not a long time. Not for the price. No. <clears throat> you have to keep on replacing trees. Yeah. You know, that that frequently. Um, it seems that's only cost effective and everything else too to find something that will if it's a little more money up front, it's gonna be a much bigger payoff yeah. all, all the time. It's not so much the money up front in the tree, it's the money up front in the site itself. So if we're just looking to take down a tree, get a stump out of there and replace it with another tree. And I haven't done any kind of other site improvements to it. That's where the problem lies. So what am I doing? I'm going to put this more durable type of tree in a location that it's not going to be very happy in, and I might not even get the 15 years. So I really need to think about: we're going to get this stump out of there, we're going to take that all that stuff, and then we're going to rip up the back of the sidewalk, and we're going to put in some good material. And, and that's where I kind of get the roadblock because it's <clears throat> not something that like. You know, the tree company that we have hired, you know, for a bidding contract, those aren't the guys that are going to be doing that. They're tree guys. They're not concrete guys. They're not asphalt guys. They'll cut the stuff, but then we, you know, have a sidewalk. So then it's, now I need someone to come in and help me build the sidewalk or put the structural soil in or something. So that's where I'm at, and I'm still trying to make my way towards that goal. So for now, there's a bunch of us tree wardens that always just kind of go, another pear tree. <laughs> We're not excited about it, but it's better than having nothing at all, unfortunately. And, but it's it's not the ultimate goal. So, so, uh, so that's number three. Does anybody have a concern with tree? Oh, I've already asked that, so I'll just went back to the picture. Let's go to number four. So now number four is somebody decided to go and plant a brand new pear tree here. Um, this is a little guy. It's only three inches. 
there really isn't anything wrong with it except for whoever decided to plant it. <laughs> it's like past poor practices. This this just absolutely just like bends my mind. It, it's it's like a migraine when I see that. It's like ridiculous. So they had the brick, nice brickwork, and then they decided to take out the brickwork and ah, you know what? We'll just pave it. Keeps the weeds down. Oh God, it just kills my head. Yeah. <clears throat> so pavement should never be laid. That's just you know. Uh, it should be understood by all, but <clears throat> somebody had a little extra pavement, smooth it out, make it look nice, you're fine. Oh. So this tree, as far as I'm concerned, it, it's not going to have a place in this new line of trees. It's not been given a great start to its life, so it's going to have a problem. And then when it gets to be that certain age, it's going to fall apart anyway. So that's why this tree is on a tree here. Instead of just picking it out and putting it back, I really, again, I wanted to be as transparent as possible and say, this is the reason why this tree is on this tree area. That's disgusting. So, does anybody have a problem with uh, removing tree number four? Is that small enough to be transplanted? It's possible. You know, it's possible. Maybe we could look into that, you know, put it in the sure. back of like some corner lot somewhere that's not going to, you know. We'll try to look at it. Yeah, we could take a look at it. I, I just think that. We're probably having a girdled root situation. So a girdled root basically is a tree strangling itself. It has nowhere to go now. It has, maybe it's getting, a, oh my gosh, the most minute little bit of air and oxygen from that little brickwork. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, if, if, you, if you work with me and take yeah, it out. I, I bet you once you pull it, I mean, it's, it's I just think you'd be better off buying it. Tree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because once you start to rip all the asphalt off of it too, and because it's so close, you start to tear at the bark. Where it's so young, you're starting to, just like the emerald ash borer, you're starting to get at that little feeding area of the tree. And it's it's kind of almost like a delicate surgery now. <laughs> it's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate, so. Yeah, but another, another point about that, so didn't some, I mean, I couldn't just like take uh, in front of my house, I couldn't just rip up the street in front of my house even though I own part of it and uh, then decide to plunk a tree in and, and, uh, and pave it. Uh, so who got permission to do this? It's out, it has to be under a me. permit. It right? was before me. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Could have been a utility company. Sometimes a utility, if there's a utility in that line somewhere along there, could have been them. So this is uh, all National BC. National Grid is known for just, uh, yeah. hey, if anybody in National Grid is watching, <laughs> we're good guys. Yeah. Uh, but I know that sometimes some companies come in and just to make it safe, they, they just close Same. it up. And somebody probably had a little extra pavement and just said, why don't we just do it here? And nobody was paying attention. Right. So they didn't, they didn't have to get any kind of permission from the city from, if there had been a tree warden, was this something that you would have been get involved in? I would have hoped that somebody would have wanted to call me on this. Now, see, the tree didn't come down, so they just paved it. So it's really up to the person that's doing it or whoever is that supervisor saying, hey, 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 we should probably talk to somebody before we just did that. Is that happening? The past practices in Quincy, no, it's not happening. So that's why I'm here now to try to educate people like, hey, if you're gonna do something like this, at least call me first so we can talk about it. But right. This is all uh, BC before Chris. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go, man. Chris. yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not, that's not to say that Quincy hasn't been doing a good job with his trees. We have some pretty spectacular trees in the city. There's no question. It's just in some instances like this, it's like nobody was paying attention. Out of sight, out of mind. Just yeah, it's more industrial areas. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. All right, moving on to number five. So now you're starting to see a little bit of a difference here. Trees leaning out in the street. You know, we maybe have some more other problems going on here. But again, for the most part, yeah, here's that asphalt strip falling up. But for the most part, you know, looks like a decent tree until you get up a little bit closer. And this is where it's really got those nice tight crotches. Some damage here from vehicle, you know, smashing it. That would be this branch over here. This is, this is from the backside looking towards the building across the street. And then this is looking back towards the property to be developed. Um, those attachments are just horrible. Somebody did some kind of little spray painting on the tree too. Just Trees just weren't cared for. <clears throat> I think on this one, yeah, this is this is classic. So what they did was, it's a grate around this tree. But they took that pavement and they paved over. You can see the grate is still there, so they paved over the grate. So they just they were just trying to get rid of pavement. 
Yeah. There's no question yeah. about it. They didn't want to bring it back. They wanted a clean truck when they went home at the end of the day. So that's just crazy ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> this tree doesn't have a chance. And this looks to me like, um, you know, maybe a sidewalk plow went by something because it's on the back side of the sidewalk. So somebody clipped it and then they went in and they sprayed um, something on a tree wound. We don't do that anymore. We don't put stuff on wounds of trees anymore. What we do is we try to clean up the, the edge of the bark. It's called bark tracing. You basically take just like a uh, serrated blade, just a regular little pan pruner. You prune it back to get just a little bit of green wood and, and the tree will heal itself. It would prefer to heal itself than to have some kind of like goopy synthetic poison sprayed in it, which is probably already trapped in some kind of decay, some kind of mold, some kind of insect. So we don't do that anymore. People are always asking me, hey, you know, you cut that branch, now you gotta come down, you're gonna put the uh, tree sealer on it? No more, we don't do that anymore. We found that it just hurts the tree more than anything else. So, does anybody uh, in th uh, object to the removal of tree five? No? Can I ask a question though? What's that? Sorry. So just looking at the grates there, um, I've seen grates like around Wollaston Center and stuff like that and the trees are kind of like this one at the maximum width and I'm just wondering what can be done about those they're sort of starting to grow over in a weird way so you see how these grates are made they get those little slats in them and it, it, it's not as easy as I'm about to say this it's a little bit of a task but you can we can pop those rings out to give the tree a little more space now obviously the grates are there to protect from tripping into you know, the, the tree pit. They're also there to protect you know, the roots of the tree because I don't know why the grates are used in this area. It doesn't look like an area that maybe some time ago was an area that was pretty heavily traveled like a, you know, a walls and center or whatever. But um, these are there to protect the roots. So they have a little bit of a lip. They sit on inside the, there's a frame inside here and it just gives a little bit of a rise over the ground so the ground doesn't stay compacted. So you can pop these out, and we've talked about it in-house about what we're gonna do with the trees down, you know, uh, in Walston Center and a couple other spots. Um, you know, do we, do we pop out those, just the <coughs> rings? Do we get new grates? Do we do away with the grates and find another type of surface? Um, there was an area over on Adams Street between Robertson down to Furnace Brook where some years ago before I started they used anybody uh, go to little playgrounds with their kids grandkids anybody like that and it's like a little rubber surface yeah well they poured that rubber surface into the tree pits to see how that would work and we just went and ripped it all out just a couple weeks ago it had been there for years but it wasn't allowing any water whatsoever. And because it, now the, the stuff we use nowadays for these playgrounds, it actually, the water does filter through and, and gets off. And, but it was ridiculous. I, I was going down there with a screwdriver and popping holes in it just to try to get some water to these trees, little tree lilacs and a couple of uh, elms. And, but we finally were able to get that material out. So we're still experimenting, in, in, and not just Quincy, but many communities. What's the best surface? for a street tree, what, what, what's the best? Some people don't like the mulch because the mulch spreads all around. Uh, some people don't like crushed stone because the stone spreads all around. If you put the mulch down, you don't do it enough, you get weeds, then the resident says, well, I'm not here to, I'm not paying for, you know, you're not gonna pay me to take, I'm a taxpayer, you come and pull the weeds. I get it, I understand, you know, if we all did a little bit, it would go a long way, but not everyone you know, has that. The playground thing sounds good if it was pervious. What's that? The playground. Substance. Yeah, yeah. If it worked right, yeah, 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 because it would flex with the roots and all. And there are some areas. I, I think Boston has done some rubber sidewalk areas. Um, I've never seen them, but I was good friend. I'm good friends with the previous tree <coughs> who's told me a little bit about it. Um, but um, again, these are the things that I'm trying to encourage our city to get into. Thinking outside the box. Thinking about new things other than pavement and grates and things like that. I'm still a mulch and potentially crushed stone guy. You know, I, that's what I like. I know the water's going through. A weed here, whenever I'm out to visit with somebody, you know, talking to someone about their tree, if there's weeds at the bottom of the tree or shoots where I just go out and cut it, throw it in the back of my truck and I'm off. So, uh, 
who knows? Maybe people uh, will take a little lesson and work with me. I don't know. But anybody here? So I think we're going to talk about five. So nobody here is upset with removal of number five. Okay. Was that five? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's uh, tree number six. Same kind of situation. A little younger tree, eight inches. <clears throat> no question. Oh, okay. No, I was just going to, on the I I just saw a bunch in Cambridge too, so I'd be curious if you're the warden that you're friends with, yep. um, what his take is. And typically, I, when I feel like when I've seen them use it, it's almost less for um, the porosity to get the stormwater, and it's more for going over like some of those really big oaks that yeah. have undulating root systems because the flexi pave is easier to make an ADA accessible surface, mm -hmm. but not needing to cut as many of the roots. Right. So there's lots of different types of materials that, and then I, I would also say that I think it's besides like just stewardship and people caring about the, you know, pulling a weed and making sure like the tree is healthy, um, that also just like the street design um, and things too where like if we're just gonna just thinking a little bit more about trying to from the get-go give these trees a little bit more space to grow um, and like those little strips actually that allow people to get out of their cars and walk around the tree but still provide enough soil volume for the tree to grow and you know so I think you know there's the big picture part of it too which is like our our roadway design and um, and trying to get it so we really are, are maximizing the, the lifespan of these trees which will which will maximize all the benefits that they provide us instead of Chris knows the typical lifespan of a street tree what is it yeah, it's like well, it between 7 to 13 years or yeah, something it's, it's short because of not, not only because of where it's planted and that it's just short because of all the different things that are happening plows and cars and storms and pests and you know residents that tie their trucks to them and pull the bumpers <laughs> that's happened a few times to me so yeah it's, i always love that story but um yeah um yeah the average age for the, the average longevity for a street tree but then you again you look at some of the street trees we have here in quincy you know we're talking you know, 50 inch diameter uh, red oaks that are just, you know, they're 160 years plus anyway. So how do they do it? It's just very opportunistic yeah. Yeah. and uh, very strong. So, so yeah, moving on to trees number six here so we can uh, kind of move along here. Um, same thing, this tree's already lost branches in the past. They're just snapping off. And in fact, while I was there, one branch did just, it snapped right off. I, I went up to look at the next tree. I, I went walking back. My truck was parked down here, and this branch was that. I said, oh, my gosh. So <laughs> it just fell right off. Like, it's okay. Yeah, okay. So does anybody here object to the removal of tree number six? No. I've read that lichens don't necessarily mean the trees. Yeah, so lichen actually, a lot of people say this to me all the time. In fact, I saw a guy on the street here in Quincy. He was power washing his trees. And I, I had to stop. I literally had to stop and said, Sir, I got to ask what you're doing. They're your private trees. You can do whatever you want. He goes, Oh, I get this green stuff. And he takes me out to the street tree. And he goes, This stuff right here. And I go, Oh, it's lichen. You don't have to do that. He goes, It's killing my tree. It absolutely is not killing the tree. It's a symbiotic relationship between an algae and I believe it's a bacteria, I think. And fungus. Yeah, yeah, fungus and, a, and an algae. Yep. And it sits on top of the wood and it basically eats particles in the air. It, it's like a particle in the ocean. And it just, this stuff comes by and it grabs onto it and it's actually a sign of healthy air. And if it was polluted air, it wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to survive. Is that so, the same kind of stuff that you go out in the savanna and you see those? Trees, well, uh, oh, Spanish, Spanish moss? moss? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's exactly the same. It could be part of maybe the same, same family. family, yeah. But this is our New England version, I guess. Yeah, yeah. a little flatter. But uh, yeah, no, I'm always telling people, no, 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 don't, don't waste your time. I asked that gentleman to not power wash the street, but he meant the bark looked great, though. So, <laughs> perfectly clean bark. I'm like, but I don't think that's good for the tree in the long run. I don't know. I can't imagine having my skin power washed. That's not fun. Not fun at all. So, yeah, yeah. So is, uh, and nobody said anything about six. So, all right, so. 
Moving on to number seven. Again, you know, here it is. You see the tree. There's no problem with this tree. It looks fine. And you get up and you just see the, the tight branching. And this one was, this is an eight inch, so, you know, a little younger, I guess. But uh, that tight branching, this tree is, is doomed. What we would do with this, and it's, because it's even so tight in the middle, I would come in here, you know, it would have been years ago, come in here and set to prune away some of these things. You know, if, if, if we really wanted to hold on to these trees and we really wanted to make sure they lived as long as possible, you come in and you do that preventive pruning early in the tree's life. You see those branches forming, you snip, snip them off, you kind of train the tree to get that growth habit to go a little wider. That was never done here. There's never been any pruning done on these trees. They were put in the ground and they did what they needed to do for the so many years they were there. And now they're saying, okay, man, we're done. So uh, does anyone have uh, an objection to removing tree number seven? Okay. So that's good. And just so everyone knows, yeah, tree number eight, that, they, that tree just decided I don't want any part of this. But I put it on the hearing anyway just in, in case anybody had uh, gone by there and said, hey, what about tree number eight? Well, there's tree number eight. It's totally dead. So. <clears throat> All right, we're moving on now. Uh, is there anybody here for any of the Ames Street trees? No? All right. Where uh, is Ames Street? Sorry. Ames Street is across from the Shea Rink oh, off of uh, Willard Street. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so this is 75 Ames Street. <clears throat> um, the reason for this hearing, now we can get back into this little box here. The reason for this hearing is the DPW actually requested that this tree be removed. Uh, as I had said probably earlier, maybe not part of the hearing, but um, Ames Street is currently under uh, reconstruction. So it's a new road and sidewalk project. The existing street tree has pushed the existing curbstone six inches into the roadway, uh, which is going to be the new roadway. Uh, removing that curb could compromise the stability of the tree as it has a slight lean, as you can tell, uh, in its efforts to grow towards the sun. So the DPW had first said to me, and I'm sorry, it's a bummer, there's not a representative here from DPW, but <clears throat> um, the DPW was concerned about this lean, and I said, it's not, the tree isn't leaning because it's getting ready to fall over. The tree is leaning and starting to straighten out at the top because it's trying to get away, and I have a better picture of the front yard of this neighbor. This, the neighbor has a very treed front yard, and the sun comes over the top here, and it doesn't get to this tree until it gets to the very tip. So it doesn't have a very big crown down below. It's like when you go walking through the forest, you're never getting hit in the face with branches and all because of the leaves and the branches are up top. So uh, that's what's happening here. So that tree just kind of bent out, and it'll start to grow straight now. Um, <clears throat> but here's the problem. This green line is just a, a, a tie line that um, the contractor had put down from one corner of the street down to the other where the curb is going to be in here so if we take that in here we have to rip out the roots of the tree right here and that's unacceptable to me they don't want the street line to be here anymore they want it to be six inches further in and that's the cry for this tree to be removed now with the way that this new with the way that this front yard looks how treated it is you almost don't even realize that that tree's there. Uh, it's an ori maple. If there is an objection for this tree to be removed, I understand. Um, if there isn't anybody, I'm almost saying it doesn't bother me because it'll be healthy for the other trees. But um, I object. Um, okay. I, you know, in part because that's just. The idea of removing a tree just because it makes DPW do something a little differently is not a good enough a good enough reason for me. I think they could build the curb out a little bit there. I think that DPW needs to do its job to <coughs> keep uh, allow this tree to thrive. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, could you say your name? Uh, my name is John Gorey. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not really thrilled about making the road wider uh, and sacrificing the tree for that. Uh, I, I'm kind of okay with whatever you recommend is best, but that to me doesn't seem like a great reason. You know, uh, if the existing sidewalk, we should be making sidewalks wider than roads, in my opinion. But that's just me. Yeah, we would definitely be losing <laughs> a bit there. So now, um, 
with my dealings in the street with the city engineer, I have asked them, to, why can't we just kind of curl that curb so it'll just be a little bit of a bump out there? So just kind of work that curb. And, <clears throat> and the reply was, because we want to remove the tree. So. so I would ask too that, I mean, uh, is it just because they're keeping with standard right of way widths? And so that is why that's where the line is drawn? That wasn't the way it was uh, told to me. It was told to me because they wanted a straight curve. Right. So, I mean, I think <clears throat> this just goes back to the point, I think, earlier, too, where uh, it doesn't make sense to just, like, draw a line and have to stay true to it, like, when there's, when there's trees right in the way. So that trees really need to just be part of the planning process. And, you know, for in this case, um, if they're concerned about plows or whatever running down the street because there's a little blip out, um, a little curve, then why not make it a bigger curve mm -hmm. and, you know, actually protect some trees. Maybe you don't do that with every single tree, but especially on a sl slow speed residential street that maybe even dead ends. No, that's the other it street. It does. It does. It does yep. dead end. That there are probably a few places where you could do just a little bit of a larger curb bulb again, increase the soil volume, slow traffic on a street that should already be slow. You know, there's no reason to, to you know, cut down all the trees just to, for a straight line. I understand with plow safety, but that's why I'm like, we'll just make that bulb a little bigger. Then they'll know they gotta go around it. Yeah. Um, I just also saw recently, just this past weekend, a couple of really beautiful oaks that um, had had the chance to grow out a little bit into the street because of bulbs like that both in the middle of a, of a block and at the ends and it just makes such a huge improvement to have that kind of space so absolutely yeah yep anybody else with any questions yes um, are there, uh, <clears throat> is there a sidewalk going on the other side of it yes yep right behind mm -hmm. there there'll be a sidewalk here do you know if, uh, if um, that tree was planted or was it just happened Oh, no, it looks the, fairly, that yeah. tree was planted. You was can it? Tell. Yeah, you can tell it was planted. <clears throat> yeah. Prior to everything being ripped up, there's, there's a tree, there's a planting strip here. It wasn't just a volunteer that came up. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know the width from the wall to the face of curb? Uh, I don't offhand. All I'm ever asking for, though, is 36 inches behind the street, the, the tree itself. Right. So whether they're going to put a five-foot sidewalk in here or whatever, right? Well, your five foot's generally the minimum now. Yeah. You know, uh, but I can get it down to 36. That's it. Can yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, tree right. one's yeah, always going to say. Yeah. Tree was always going to say, "Come on, yeah. you can get to there." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, just being my civil engineer self. <laughs> but is this a dead end residential street? Right. No. So there could be a agree. hierarchy I, of I, uh, I, I, sidewalk. You, you don't know the width of the road, and at yeah. the same time, you know. Is it like a really densely populated neighborhood? Is there parking on the street? Is there? Uh, it, is, it, it could be a, a benefit for the neighborhood from the standpoint of getting that extra six inches, believe it or not. Um, and that's why I wish that <coughs> the UW. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know. I know the area. I know, you know. Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm not familiar with that particular street. Yeah. My guess is I've been on that street enough in the past couple of weeks here that it's, I think it's at least a 24 foot street. <clears throat> yes. So um, my husband actually just did some calculations to the value of trees with this eye tree. Oh yeah, my husband did some calculations with um, some software about like the value that street trees bring to like neighboring houses and also just the neighborhood. Um, and so just to put this out there, the, um, this particular tree to the nearby, couple of nearby houses there, um, so it saves $20 per year in energy savings from like having to use AC and, or fuel in the um, winter for heating. Um, over its lifetime, it's stored 2.8 tons of carbon and every year it, it captures 96 pounds of carbon and every year it avoids um, 670 gallons of stormwater runoff. So, and in addition to that, like the, um, just having like a leafy neighborhood in general increases the value of homes 
in that neighborhood by six to nine percent, which is like for the average Quincy uh, home price of 500 something, it's like uh, 30 to $50,000. So even if we feel like, well, it would be nice to have like a slightly wider street by six inches or something, I feel like we're, we're kind of missing out on all the benefits environmentally, but also just, you know, bottom line to people's home prices. If we cut down these street trees and we don't have leafy streets, the streets aren't as beautiful and people don't want to live there. So I guess that's what I want to throw out there. And I'd say as long as this tree isn't in um, danger of collapsing, I would say let's keep no, it. No, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's not the most full nor yeah. maple, yeah. mostly because, you know, it is being shaded, but once it gets like up it. there, you know, we can prune it. We could, you know, start to shape it, work it a little bit. You know, it's it, there's, the potential is there, no doubt about it. In fact, um, some of the things you just brought up about uh, home values and all. So this is going to be a concrete sidewalk. So I had a couple of residents call me on this street, and they've already established the sidewalk. And when it came to their street tree, we paved over the roots. So we put black asphalt because it's a little more flexible. You don't need to form it out or anything. So these folks would call me up, and they were very upset, saying, you know, you just killed my property value. I said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I have a black eye in front of my house. I said, yeah, but you have a nice street yeah. tree, too. So look at it like that. And, you know, you talk to the people a little bit more, and you'd understand it's a little bit more than just the black asphalt in front of their house. It's, you know, I have a bad sewer pipe, or, you know, I don't want to have that hump, and, or, you know, all these different things. But... Once I got off the phone with them and explained to them the things you were just talking about, you know, the, the you know the carbon sequestration and the, and the, the stormwater uptake and the shade and the AC benefit and all that, they started to think, wow, geez, you know, I never really thought about it like that. So, hopefully, one person at a time, baby steps, baby steps, we'll teach these uh, folks that don't quite understand. So, that's the, no, that's the goal. So, all right. So, we uh, anybody else object to the tree coming down? I have one. That's all I really need to hold this right down. Your name, sir? Okay. John Gorey. John Gorey. Okay. And you said he's by us now. G O R E Y. G O R E Y. Okay. Did you, did you had you signed in? No. Before you no, before sorry. you leave before you leave if you wouldn't mind signing in. No. Um, just so that when uh, what's going to happen is with uh, the trees that uh, are objected to, I want to make sure that I talk with the you know the requester. And explain to them that you know I had three, four, five, whatever uh, objections, and these are the reasons why. <clears throat> so, all right, we'll move on to our next tree. Oh, yeah. So that's that picture, and then you know this is just uh, the look. You know, again, well treated front up there. You know, so it's 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 a nice. That's a nice little neighborhood. I like that neighborhood up there. Okay, so the next tree is at 79 Eames Street. Uh, the abutting resident uh, right here at 79 uh, made the request. He wants to expand his driveway opening. He has already been approved for a curb cut by the DPW. The tree's existing location does not provide longevity to this tree, unfortunately, as the roots are consistently crushed by vehicles currently with his current driveway opening. Uh, and the resident has a very healthy uh, red oak in his front yard that this tree is being kind of stunted by. It, it looks fine right here, and I've kind of done a little, I did an outline so you could, what, which tree are we actually talking about here? So this is the, the little maple, and then his red oak, the crown, is out in the back here. And it's kind of like <clears throat> the inside of this tree, when you see another vision of it, unfortunately I didn't get this picture on a sunny day, it's really stunted on this side, so it's kind of pulling a lean out. And this is what I mean, the tree's roots, they, you know, they do go onto the driveway. Tree's roots will go onto the driveway. They won't really go onto the street because of that curb. The curb usually typically is about 18 inches, so they won't go out that far into the street they'll want to go into the yard and they'll want to come into the driveway so his driveway opening right now it's interesting he has to kind of come in on a side angle and pull in and he's constantly driving over the roots so his goal is to bring his driveway out here and keep the red oak in his front yard and close up the driveway space over this side based on an ordinance I guess it's in the town you can only have certain so many feet as a, for an opening so um, again, um, I didn't, 
I didn't tell them that I wouldn't cut down this tree. I said, you know what, I'm going to have to put it on a tree hearing and talk about this one because I just want, I want people to understand where, the perspective I'm coming from too, being Nora Maple, stunted by a red oak in this guy's front yard that I really, really want him to hold on to. Um, so that's where I'm at. Do I have another picture there? No, that's the next tree. So this is the tree I'm talking about. Uh, are there any objections to this tree being removed? Um, just so you're comfortable. Just, you know, because I, I do, you know, your opinion is extremely important. Thank you. Your professional opinion is that you, you're okay with taking it down. Personally, I'm okay with taking it down because I oh, really want to see that red oak thrive. And I think if that thrives, this tree is going to start to lean more and more out over to the driveway space. And he's driving over the roots all the time. It was planted very close to, probably wasn't a driveway at the time. Yeah. Um, there's a D stone right here, so it's a corner edge stone, and the roots. And I, I should have got a picture better from the top. I don't know if you would have been able to understand it, but they're going into that direction. Um, it, I mean, the tree looks beautiful from that perspective. So there is, so I don't know if you can see this, or I, yeah, and I don't know if I can see it from the other picture from the 93. There's another big nori maple right in here that's beautiful that he loves. Oh, he wants to keep that tree, and he wants to keep his private oak, and this is the one that's causing the problem. So there, he really does have, the only place he won't have any tree canopy is really just right there, and I, I don't think, yeah, maybe we could even talk about, you know, yeah. putting something yeah. over there. So we can, because yeah. he has yeah. to add a little bit of tree lawn, but it looks like there's an adjacent drive. So it yeah, probably wouldn't be enough space for the one, next but maybe neighbor. right over there. Yeah. yeah. Depending on utilities in that front yard there, maybe we could okay. look at the plant like right there. And right he could right he could help water it. Yes. <laughs> when we're not getting deluges. Yeah, right, every right, day. right. Nope. Yeah. Watering is all uh, turned off right now. Yeah. yeah I'm curious, just for uh, <clears throat> clarification too, so what he wants to do is like basically even off his driveway. How can he do that? Like it's it's on a public sidewalk with a, with a curb. You can call, you can apply for a curb cut, and then he has to pay for it. Right. But, so. I'm actually glad to hear that he has to close off the other side, though. Yeah, I you can't just expand. Like, you, can't just, you have to. Yeah. You can have your driveway, but you have to have it a certain amount of feet based on whether it's a single family house or it's a two family house. So whatever he takes <clears throat> over here. He has to get back a little bit over here. He has to close it off. So technically, he's not increasing impervious. Yeah. And who's going to pay for the tree removal? That would be the resident. Yeah, the town has no interest in removing the tree, so put that back on him. Say, oh, well, not right there, be more like over. And where that's going to happen is going to be tough because he's going to get a little space back. So I, uh, How about the next it's always time interesting time? when I when I have tree hearings, this is great. I got to think about this more. I'm not having this conversation out in the field with myself. So <laughs> the pictures I take, you know, I'm not anticipating what I'm going to. So I should have got a picture stepping out over here a little bit to see because that, that neighbor's driveway is right here. So we're not going to plant a tree in like a three foot little right. square mm -hmm. in the middle of two driveways. So okay. we might not get the tree there, but I can talk yeah. with that neighbor yeah. next door and see if they'd be interested in getting the tree. Yeah. yeah. So it, it will increase, probably that'll stay pavement. I don't know. That'd be up to DPW, I think. We'd have to talk with uh, DPW and see how that works. So any objection to, for 79 Ames Street to be removed? I guess I just, um, I'm, I can see that it's kind of an awkward space with the two driveways close to each other, but. No, I can't, I'm sorry. Oh. My hearing isn't perfect. Oh, <laughs> it's, an, it's an awkward space with the two driveways right next to each other. So I don't know that, you know, what would be done to make it not, um, 
make the water be able to go through. But in general, I think we're just opposed to the idea of, um, or a lot of us are opposed to the idea of just more um, impervious uh, oh, surfaces. So again, like, you know, it, it seems like there's other trees nearby that sort of make this one not quite as critical. But yep. And I'm glad to see that there might be an, a space for another tree there, but if he's just going to be sort of adding more impervious surface in a city that has flooding problems and, and just had to agree with the EPA to pay $100 million to deal with um, sewer problems, like it just, all of these things are small, but they add they up. They all add up. <coughs> they all add up. <coughs> there, there, is a, there is some new can be used in that little area where he has to seal up. There's there's this stuff called either X stone or whatever they call it. It's like this concrete X that puts in the ground. It, it allows you to park on it, but still allows water to go through. It's about six or seven inches. We used to use that a lot in Watertown, trying to like in, in neighborhoods where we knew we couldn't get a tree. Uh, instead of having them park on any kind of like a little grass surface that's just going to become a hole after a while, you put this in the ground so we were still getting some infiltration. So it's being used in projects a little bit more. So you could talk to the DPW about that. I could I could actually talk to them about that. So that would be something they would install then? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know how the DPW is, you know, again, man, I wish they were here. But um, I don't know how they would do that. It wouldn't be something coming. It would be me asking for it, you know, making them aware that this is something we'd like to see. but. It's the DPW ultimately that's going to say, you know, what is required to go back. And uh, I don't have enough experience in the city yet to uh, have said that I've lived through that yet. So. Well, it seems like it's going to be a small little spot. It's just going to be tiny. So <clears throat> the grass, it could be like flowers or a shrub or or something, so it stays pervious, and then and then it doesn't just become something like if it's a little taller, then maybe he won't, or the neighbor won't accidentally drive over it <laughs> too, so. Yeah. So maybe it's not a tree, but there's certainly some drought tolerant, tough shrubs or something yep. like that, that would be nice. Yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely, uh, thanks to uh, this Are you also the shrub warden? <laughs> <laughs> um, depends on who you ask. <laughs> ask, I guess. Um, you know, I've been told by a couple different communities that I'm responsible for what's being planted out on the sidewalk there, whether it's a tree, it's a shrub, whatever, it's flowers, whatever. I'm not really giving anybody a hard time on flowers, hostas, things like that. I do warn people all the time, though, don't put a lot of effort and a lot of money into what you're planting out there because it's going to get crushed in the wintertime, you know, with all the salt yeah. and all the, pl the snow we just plow, and it just... So I used to get screamed at all the time. I just planted a Japanese maple out there, and it was a little thing I got, and I paid 50 bucks for it, and it's dead. I'm like, oh, gosh, of course it's dead. You know? <laughs> That's not where that kind of tree wants to be, you know? And I tell people, you know, hostas, you know, different kind of wildflowers that grow up or whatever, do something like that. As long as it doesn't call, uh, cause a line of sight problem, uh, it's not going to be banging out into the, the roadway, causing, like, you know, people driving around it or whatever. Um, I have this one story when I worked in Watertown there was this woman I think she was from she was from South America I forgot which country it was <clears throat> and I only found out about this after I had to engage with her I'm driving on the road and I see this little shrub on the side of the road and it had these red berries that were so super shiny they look like gumballs and I had to stop and look at this just to figure out what is it so I took a picture of it went back I did some research and I found out it was a plant somehow she got it into the country it's a plant only found growing down in South America and these, these little fruit balls are like extremely poisonous. In fact, in, in this, in this write-up, some of the native South American tribes that are down there, they use them in their blow darts. Like, <laughs> they use the stuff and it like paralyzes people. So I was like, wow. So I went back and I knocked on the door and she didn't speak any English. So I just came out and I, I learned a couple words. It, it said, you know, muerto, which means dead. <laughs> so, I don't want muerto. You could pick this up, put it in your backyard. She got very upset with me. 
her daughter came out and talked with me, and I said, I know what this plan is now. It was some kind of like, it was some kind of a chicory. But, oh man, so she ended up picking up, putting it in the backyard. And I was like, oh my gosh, could you imagine? You have like a little kid, because I wanted to almost take a little bite of this thing. Yeah. It looks so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, Animal. yeah, anything. So, yeah, she, I don't know how she got it in the country, but anyway. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is this yeah, is an great. I have all I have all kinds of crazy stories. Yeah. <laughs> That's for another. We'll have another Zoom meeting on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, nobody objected to this tree coming down, and I'm going to work with the DPW and the resident, and try to work with the next door resident as well. Probably, I guess that probably 77, to see if we can get another tree planted in that location. All right. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> okay, so this is 93 Ames Street. This is our uh, the only ash on our uh, agenda for today. It's 14 inch diameter breast height. Uh, the reason for the hearing is the abuzzing, budding resident, as well as myself. This tree is in decline uh, due to root zone damage. <clears throat> uh, over the years, this uh, sidewalk here has been um, replaced a bunch of times. The resident had some problems in their front yard, so they, they admittedly said to me, you know, we had to take out some of the roots of the tree. Uh, we tried to cut it as clean as possible, but, you know, we're not sure, we're not tree people. We had, you know, humps and whatever. So I'm like, that's all right, you know, I mean, you have the right to do that as long as you cut it clean. You know, if it was your neighbor and the tree's coming into the neighbor's yard, you know, your yard, you can't just go out there and slash and burn it. And if you kill the tree, you could be held liable for the cost of that tree, so. <clears throat> We try to hold residents to the same standard. It's a little harder when it's me versus the whole city, but um, anyway. So this again is an ash tree, and I've talked to you a little bit earlier about emerald ash borer, and it's been identified in the city. Well, that little pest is attracted to ash trees in decline because that tree releases, I don't know if it's actually called a pheromone. I, th I know it's a pheromone when it's in the insect, and when the tree releases a certain scent of it being in decline, that bug will race to it because it knows that the tree's defense system is down. <clears throat> so I'll lay my eggs there and we'll take care of this tree. Too sweet, right? We'll get rid of this thing. So in my personal opinion, as a certified arborist, it's best for us to lose this tree now because we're not gonna be able to be putting investment to holding onto this tree, knowing that we're gonna be worked against by that pest. So. So I decided with the resident, you know, they were concerned because it's been losing branches in their front yard. Now I know why it's been losing branches because it, the root system's been so banged up. <clears throat> so you see, you can't really get a good look here, but all these limbs in here, they're all dead. They're all just starting to fall off the tree. It looks perfectly fine until you get up close to it. And again, I apologize for the, the rainy photo. It's, it is what it is nowadays. Um, so there's so many dead branches in this tree that when we get in there to clean it up, the tree's going to be lifted a lot higher. That, that, that scent coming from a stressed tree is going to be really out there. We know the pest is in the city. The tree's just going to end up coming down anyway. So that's my thought on this. <clears throat> Not so, you know, unfortunately, I feel like this is going to become a common occurrence uh, with ash trees that we're just not going to be able to um, provide any level of protection for. Yes. Would it be possible to replace in the close to that area a new, uh, you know, other than an ash? Yep. Can that be built into your plan? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we can uh, plant. They have a whole frontage here. We can plant another tree somewhere. Yeah, definitely. And work with the resident to get the right kind of tree that you know wouldn't bother them as much. So definitely, we could do that. No problem there. Yes. Um, I know we're still working on the inventory, but can you tell us, like, I, I, it kind of makes me nervous to think that, like, maybe every ash tree would be potentially up for removal because uh, of this emerald ash borer around. And I guess um, if we had, like, an inventory and we knew which ones were healthy and which ones were, like, big or in a great location or something like that we could sort of maybe try to protect those but I guess I'm just trying to get a sense of like how big this problem is and like at what I know that some 
some trees are, for whatever reason, like not as affected by uh, bugs as other ones. They, there's some that survive these infestations. Or, um, so I guess I'd worry that we were taking down trees that might have that resistance or whatever. Like, I don't know. I, I'm just, how can you, can you tell us how many are known in Quincy? Like, no, no? Okay. <laughs> not yet. Okay. <laughs> no, unfortunately. No, I, I can just tell you that there are some streets where it's the only tree on the street. We have a street, uh, we have a street up next to, it turns into Washington Street, it's called Baxter, Baxter Ave. It's all ash trees. <clears throat> There's probably 40 on, 40 of them. Planted under the wire side too, so all those trees are all distorted and leaning and look like goalposts, you know. Um, so there are a number of ash trees in the city, I can't tell you how many. But I can tell you that if this tree wasn't showing any signs of decline, I, I wouldn't have it on a tree here. I wouldn't just put it on a tree here just to have it on a tree here. So if it does, if it's one of those rare ash trees that could fight off a pest like this and still survive and thrive, then there's no reason to take it down. So this isn't going to be a program just to go around and take down trees in advance of what could potentially happen. It's, we're going to go by it tree by tree by tree. You know, so it's the only way we can do it anyway right now. We, we don't have enough uh, resources to do it any other way. So, yes, sir. I'm going to go. Oh. So I just wanted to thank you for the education. Oh. It was very educational. Thank you. Nice to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Thank you for coming. I look forward to working with you. Uh, yeah, and actually I'm going to be shooting you a revised plan. So Perfect. Keep an eye out for it. Excellent. Take thank you. Um, yeah, I think that um, if you to those trees on Baxter and making sure that then, uh, you know, residents don't feel like, oh, well, then we should take out, like, this tree's leaning or this tree's whatever and, like, get removing all those, like, because we, I guess, you know, yeah, we don't want, I think, residents to feel like it's doomed, so let's just do it. Let's just yeah. get it over with. So I've assessed all those trees on that street. That's how I knew there were so many up there. Uh, we had to take one out because it was leaning into the street and it had been clipped by a truck. So we took that one tree out and then I had my guys prune. They're not done yet, there's like three trees left. But they raised every one because they were hanging really low. They cleaned them away from the houses. They, they, we did some good maintenance pruning on those trees to hopefully hold on to them as long as we can. Took all the dead wood out of these trees. Like this, you know, it was a little bit less than this. There was no root damage. That, tr that street is called out by DPW is getting reconstruction. So. I'm going to be watching them. I'm going to be paying attention to them. I'm going to let them know in advance that we want to be as gentle around these trees as possible because there is a situation here. Because this pest doesn't just go after uh, the declining trees. If there's a declining ash and then there's a healthy ash right next door, well, they're still going to go to the healthy ash because they're right there. So um, that has been already determined. So Probably a good opportunity to look at the road you can like maximize planting of different species yeah, you know absolutely. for yeah. eventual <laughs> there isn't really a lot of new planting locations all those trees are doing pretty well and, uh, yeah. yeah so you know maybe we met one location where that tree came down but uh, it's a pretty well treated street I was pretty amazed yeah. every every day is new around here for me still there's so many streets <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always going, wow, look at this place. This is yeah. great. Brand new. Yeah. So I was, I was pretty, uh, I was happily, uh, happily amazed at how many nice trees were on that street. So, so um, let me just get back to this. Does anybody have an objection to this tree being removed? And we'll, we will look into plant a new tree along that street. All right. We're coming down to our final tree here. All right, so this is at 48 miles drive. This is a red oak, 22 inch, fairly younger uh, red oak. Uh, the reason for this hearing, the abutting resident who lives at 48 miles drive is very concerned with the roots in her sewer pipe in her yard. She's also concerned about the cracks in her driveway and her property line foundation wall being destroyed by the roots of this tree. And she has requested time and time again immediate removal of this healthy oak. Um, and I am amazed that she's not here. Mm -hmm. Amazed. 
So uh, just a little close-up look, uh, you know, what's going on here because of her concerns that, you know, her wall's falling apart and she's got roots in her front yard and her driveway's banged up and all this. And, you know, this, this is actually an extremely clean situation. As far as a, a, a nice red oak in front of someone's house in a quiet little neighborhood, a, a desirable neighborhood within Quincy right off of uh, Furnace Brook Parkway, uh, at least that's what the people that live there tell me. I don't live there, so but they say to me, it's a nice, quiet neighbor when I walk around there. It's it's a beautiful situation. The tree is very healthy. It's It needs a little bit of a prune as well as that entire neighborhood. That entire neighborhood has got some really low-hanging trees, a lot of dead wood in there. We had to take a couple of trees out of that neighborhood last year due to decay. And But um, I need to send a crew in there and have them stay there for about a month. Um, but just those two pictures alone and then... What I did was, you know, she complains to me so much about her driveway and the cracks in her driveway. It can't keep it up. So I love Google Maps now because Google Maps has the street view and it'll go back some years. So this is what her driveway looked like in 2007, long before I started working. In, what? That's great. It looks nice, right? Right. It looks great. Knowing so, that you can go back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we go four years later and... Geez, you know, the driveway still looks great. Everything looks clean, wall still in great shape. Everything looks great, you know. I don't see the concern here. We go to 2014, still looking pretty good. Um, you know, so we're getting up here now. Seven years later, everything looks in great shape. So this was just yesterday. I went out there to take another picture of that driveway. There is a crack right here, but this driveway is now 14 years old. The asphalt drive asphalt drive yeah the street looks right yeah. yeah. <laughs> street looks bad asphalt driveways i had an asphalt driveway done 14 years ago and mine's starting to show that same stuff where i park my vehicle it's starting to get a little dips when i asked the guy at the time i said geez this is beautiful how long is it going to last he goes yeah hey, they usually go about 15 17 years and then you have to have them replaced just because of wear and tear wear and tear uh, you can seal them, you can blow them, you can do whatever you want, but you, it's asphalt. So it's, 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 you're going to keep driving on it. It's weight on something that it, you know, heats up, it expands, it cracks, it does all that. So for that little crack, for me to take down the tree, and then the concern is the sewer pipe in her, in her yard, uh, it's, it's cracked. And she annually has to call the DPW, and she recently had a backup. And she said that the backup was my fault um, because I should have taken down the tree. But yet, if you look at her front yard, she's got shrubs. And, and I did this one time in Watertown where the resident there was very upset with me, called out. Channel 7 actually came out to uh, help me Hank or whatever her name was there. Because she said that I was being neglectful and she had a sewer backup in her house. So we went out there, the DPW and myself, and we excavated and we found the crack, and it wasn't the street tree. The roots had actually stopped for the street tree, and they were going to another part of her yard. She had some ewes in her front yard yes. that had reached down and got into that That's sewer That's what pipe. I have. I have a big ewe yeah. in the front of my house, and it goes into my city and get my annual they, row. They have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cut it right out. Yeah. So she I continues to complain to me, saying that it's, it's Once a year. my fault. And yeah. So what my response to every resident that calls me here is, if you replace your pipe and we still continue having problems with some kind of roots, then we'll put it on a tree and we'll talk about it. I, I'm not, I, Check I your am, yard for you stuff first. <laughs> you know, and I told her, and I held off putting this tree on a tree hanging. She wanted it on so many different tree hangs. And so I, I said, no, but and I just said, all right, I'm going to do this and I'll see you there and we can talk about it. And I don't see her here and I'm still objecting to this tree's removal so I'd like to see if there's any other objections to this tree coming down <laughs> yeah, but um, it's it's certainly not going to be me uh, saying that this tree should come down so we one two three four five six six residents I think that's also a prime candidate for a curb bowl to give it more space <laughs> and potentially and this road's pretty wide there miles drives pretty uh, it's a, at least it's really quiet up in that end of town. Yeah. Um, and with that road looking the way it is, there's potential that um, that road may be right. coming up for re renewal. So we damage. could look at something like that. Yeah. I'm sending you a picture, Absolutely. I think. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to say that the. Um, 
the numbers for this tree for stormwater runoff were really the highest numbers of, it, of any of the ones that we calculated. So it was 3,000 gallons of stormwater runoff avoided per year. Um, and this resident gets saved $47 per year in energy savings. So, um, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of damage. There's a whole lot of good that's coming from this tree. And red oaks, um, I'm in the process of reading this book on the nature of oaks by um, an entomologist. And he said, oaks support more forms of life and more fascinating interactions than any other tree genus in North America. So, yeah, I'm very much opposed to uh, the idea of taking this tree down. Well, it'd be good if she got those facts. Yeah. yeah. I'll be speaking with everybody, no, yeah. giving her all the facts. <laughs> with her anyway, just because I'm a little disappointed that she didn't attend. So, yeah. That's strange. Yeah, so that's where we're at with this one. So, uh, I guess uh, that's good to know that everyone here and me <laughs> objected to this. So, um, and then I just um, I just finish up with saying thanks for coming and please take care of your trees because in turn they'll take care of you. So, so thank you for all for coming to my tree here.